Hey there, it's Jess. I want to show you a really fun technique using some of our blanks and our wire. So we have, here I have a collection of three of our blank styles. We have Solid Brass, which is our Vintage Vogue line, Natural Brass, and then Artisan Pewter. And these are a collection of like the smaller shapes. We have circles, oval, triangle, um, diamond shape, and then like long um, bars. And they're really great for making quick and simple rings using our Sizzix Big Kick Machine and our Deco Emboss and Deco Etch dies. And then our coordinating pair wire. So I have 16 gauge solid brass and natural brass wire. And you can see here I've made um, a variety of styles. You could use patina or you could just simply use a natural brass blank and relief it to bring out that pattern. Um, and then the solid brass here, this one's patina, and this is deco etch with a little bit of patina to accentuate that intricate design. So, um, a lot of fun ways. These tags here, or the long bar, were simply hammered on a steel bench block with a ball peen hammer. And then at, I added patina, and then I curved it on the ring mandrel with the wire. So, I will show you here how to quickly do this. I'm using the standard platform and so the shim on the big kick and one clear cutting pad. You could see that mine are very worn and used. This is, happens with the deco etch and the pattern comes onto the cutting pad. That's okay. They still work just fine. I wanted to show you that. And then eventually they may start warping. You can see this is kind of curved. It still works. I turn it with kind of each or every use, um, every couple uses to... Um, prevent that from happening as quickly, but it still does work. Eventually you may need to replace your die, and that's fine. So this is the Moroccan tile die. I'm going to set, let's see here, we'll do a natural brass blank, and a solid brass. I'm not directly over the die, so see how well I line this up. Oh, there should be a little off. That's that's okay, right? Okay, so I'm gonna close that up. <clears throat> Actually, have that upside down. Not a big deal. And run that through. So now I have these really fun patterns that wanted to go a little bit crooked. I did one before. So here you could see the same pattern on solid brass, solid brass here, natural brass on the top, um, and then the natural brass here. So what I'm going to do with the natural brass pieces is simply take our metal reliefing block and just, oh, there I go. I, drop that one. Typical, right? Okay, so as you use the metal reliefing block, this one's been used a lot and worn, so I'm using the dark gray side because it's not brand new, so this is really worn, so it's not going to um, sand it too much. It's kind of more of a light sanding, see? how that pattern pops out. There, the pattern will be double sided on your blank. It's like a debossed and embossed side. So you could decide once you relief it, do you like that side better or that pattern? So you have um, two choices there. It's kind of cool. And on this oval, same thing. Sand your second side and then you could choose that side for this side, this would be cool to stamp like an initial with like a small three millimeter letter stamp set. I'll have to give that a try sometime. Now with the solid brass, I would recommend adding patina because um, you're not going to get another color when you sand this off. That's with our natural brass finish. You get the solid brass color in the background. So with this, you would add patina to accentuate the design or you could just wear it light like that. So. <clears throat> The next step is to simply take 16 gauge 
or you could do an 18 gauge, but I like working with a 16 gauge wire to create the band. And you could go with the lighter solid brass, which this one here um, will eventually tarnish because it's, it's just raw solid brass wire where this natural brass is a colored wire and this is a non-tarnish premium quality wire. So this will stay this dark color. Um, I'm going to go with the solid brass. I love the look of this lighter brass. So what I do is first I'm going to add a second hole. So you see where the first hole is in your blank. Go directly across from that and use our 1.5 millimeter hole punch pliers and punch a hole on the opposite side. And I always like to use a flat nose plier to kind of crimp down and smooth out um, maybe any rough spot from adding that hole. So now you have your two holes there. I'm going to have this as the top of my um, ring. So I want to make sure that this, the wire is sticking up towards, you know, that in that direction. And I'm going to use a metal ring mandrel to bend this around. Um, you could start with the ring mandrel before cutting, if you'd like, kind of start to form it. I suggest using one that has measurements on it if you're going to be making rings to sell in that. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those here right now. I'll use a flush cutter just to cut some of that off. Um, so I kind of just play around and place it on the mandrel and then um, kind of hold the wire up on my finger and I just go with it. But if you want to be more precise and make, you know, sized rings, get one that has, um, they have like the notches on here that tell you the ring sizes. And that's nice to use to work with. So now that you have like this curved shape and you have your two ends of wire sticking up, you can start with one and I grip it with a chain nose plier and kind of grip that little piece of wire and curve it back around towards, towards the ring band of the wire. So let's see if you could see that. Okay. Like that. Now with the second side, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and push down and I can curve that on um, around with it. And you can leave this blank flat like I have on this one, which is fine. Or you can curve them. I've curved a few as well. This one has see a slight curve to it. And what you would do with that is just use our um, filigree shaping pliers or a bale plier and gently curve the blank. I'll show you that on another piece. So now I'm going to slide this down and grip this second side with my chain nose pliers while it's on the mandrel and kind of start curving that around. See that? And I'll slide it off. So you don't want to do it too tight like I just did. There we go. And then I'm just going to grip around the wire here and crimp that down a little bit. See, so now you have a really fun and simple ring. They're very comfortable to wear. I really don't even feel these on my fingers right now. That's how comfortable they are. So this one's smaller. It's going to be fun to wear pinky. And like I said, just create a whole bunch of different sizes and patterns and colors. Um, so I would show you this. So once you have your hole on both sides, let's say I punched one on this side too, you're going to curve it in that direction because that's obviously where um, it's going to be sitting on your finger. So I just hold the larger 8 millimeter side of the barrel plier behind the blank and use my thumb to kind of push as I'm curving and turning, turning this. So this has a slight curve to it. So when it sits on your finger, it's resting a little bit more flat where, or a little bit, you know, shaped on your finger than flat. But I like it both ways. So, and again, here's the Artisan Pewter. This ring and this ring was done with our 
vintage embroidery deco etch die. So you could see the silver with this pattern here and the brass with this flower. And then onyx black patina and our earth brown to accentuate the pattern. Really fun. And then the same Moroccan tile die with some of our patina. So um, yeah, just get creative and have fun mixing metals and trying different shapes and patterns and colors. And um, I have other fun ideas with larger blanks with you could do the same thing with um, deco emboss and deco etch or patina or just texturizing with a hammer or letter stamping and then dapping them and riveting them to a ring base. So I'll have to show that technique sometime soon too. But um, give it a try and have fun. Bye.